What's up everyone, Steven here from Charge Overland. In today's video, we're gonna be assembling this Thule Caprock roof platform, installing it on my Rivian R1T. I'm gonna walk you through that whole process. I am also gonna do some efficiency tests with this platform installed, just to see what the range hit's going to be. And we'll do a little bit of a comparison with the Rivian crossbars. So if you're running those on your truck right now and you kinda of wanna know the differences between the crossbars and this platform, you'll find that in this video. Let's get started. I've had a set of Rivian crossbars on my truck since I got it just over a year and a half ago and have taken them out on a lot of trips. Overall, I've been pretty impressed, aside from a few issues which I'll touch on in just a moment, but I do want to go over some of the basic stats for these crossbars. The price is $650 for a set of two, and they have a 250 pound dynamic weight load and 780 pounds static. The crossbars themselves weigh 28 pounds and when they're attached to the roof of the truck, like I'm showing here, they're right about 54 inches wide. Also of note, they're modular and they telescope, so you can use them on the truck bed, on the roof, and also on the R1S. All right, I'm about to get started on assembling and installing this Thule Caprock. Just wanted to touch on one other quick thing with the crossbars. I do really appreciate the fact that there's an integrated locking mechanism here. And I also like the fact that I can just easily pop these off and remove the crossbars when I don't need them. So that's a nice feature. Um, and most systems, once you get them mounted on the vehicle, it's a little bit of work to get them on and off. So I do appreciate that but I think there's some design flaws with how this is set up. The first one is a small thing, it's fit and finish, but this door never fully closes all the way. So this one's not as bad as some of the other ones, but I do have some where it's almost popped out and it looks like they're always open, which is kind of annoying. The other thing that I've noticed, and I'll walk to the other side of the truck for this, this crossbar where it mounts to the roof, you can hear that, it's loose and it rattles. Um, I don't think it's going anywhere, it's still locked in there, but hearing that while I'm driving inside the truck is not the best thing. And I think the Thule system is a little bit more solid in how it locks in. It doesn't easily remove, but I think that's one of the design flaws of having a system like this where it does just pop on and off so easily. It's not always going to stay locked in and solid over time. At least this one does not. So that's something I'm looking forward to, hopefully with the Thule system that will be better. All right, speaking of that, let's get started on the assembly of that Thule Caprock. Okay, we've got one final thing and it's kind of a big one. I'm not anticipating this is gonna change, hopefully, um, but just wanted to check the LTE coverage. Right now I've just got the crossbars on the roof. I just pulled out of my garage, so don't have the house or anything above me. Um, and we've got two bars of LTE coverage. We will check that again once we get the Thule rack installed. When you install this platform on your Rivian, you're gonna get three boxes. The largest one is the Caprock platform itself. There is a second box, which is the Evo fixed point, And these are the feet that attach the platform to your truck. And finally, the third box, is the Rivian specific bracket kit, which I will get into in much more detail a little bit later in this video. The first step is to assemble the Caprock platform, and I'm not gonna get into too much detail on this part because it would make for a very long video, but we'll touch on some of the high level stuff. You'll start by installing a rubber strip to the front and rear crossbars, and all of the tools and fasteners that you need are included with this kit. The wind diffuser goes on next, along with the two corner pieces for the front crossbar. Then you're gonna install the Thule logo and the other two corner pieces on the rear crossbar. From there, the perimeter of the platform is gonna to start to come together. You'll attach the Thule badges to the side rails. And then you also wanna make sure you're adding these small nuts to the channels on the side rails, which will allow you to attach the rest of the crossbars to this platform. Then all of the corner pieces get attached and you have the perimeter of your Caprock platform. Next, you'll be opening the Evo fix point box and these feet are going to be attached to two of the crossbars on the platform. You do have to remove a plastic piece on those crossbars before you can get the feet on. And then once they're on there, you have to reattach that plastic piece on the end. 
Now you're going to take the five crossbars and attach them to the platform perimeter. When you're doing this, make sure you're not tightening them down completely because once you get the platform on the truck, you're gonna to wanna to be able to slide it around and adjust it so it's centered on your vehicle. Okay, so that is the main assembly for the Caprock platform. Let's get into the Rivian specific parts. Okay, so the platform is basically ready to go. I didn't wanna walk you through this step-by-step -step on that because that would have been a whole separate video, but I will walk you through all of the Rivian specific steps for this assembly. So we've got some instructions for mounting to the roof ports here. These are the parts we need for one of the brackets that mounts to the roof ports. So I'm gonna take you through that step-by-step -step, and then I'll do the other three of them after that. All right, real quick before I get started here, a recommendation and from my own personal experience, a few months back, I cracked my roof glass. I dropped a socket wrench on it from maybe half an inch up and I had to have it completely replaced. It was a pain in the butt and I wouldn't want to go through that again. So anytime I'm up here now doing anything really, I put a microfiber or towel or something down to protect the glass. So especially when you're working with Metal parts, these have some sharp edges. If you were to accidentally drop this, the last thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get a cool platform installed on your roof and have to replace your roof glass. So yeah, just a quick disclaimer there, let's get started. Okay, first step, we're gonna take this little metal bracket, metal cylinder with a threaded opening in it. That's gonna go in here. It doesn't lock in or anything, it's just kinda of loose in there. And then we put that into the roof port and we're gonna grab this threaded rod here and just tighten this down. And then this should stay put once this is tight. Okay, next we've got this big rubber piece here. This is the base of the bracket. You just wanna make sure that this portion with kind of this V design is facing outward. So it can go in facing the wrong way but you don't want this writing and this side of it to be facing the outside of the truck. So make sure you've got it in this way. Um, I will say already, the way the bottom of this is designed with these formations, they fit really nice into the roof port and it feels like it's gonna be pretty snug in there. Next is this metal bracket. The taller edge is gonna face out and there's also a small plastic insert that goes inside here and that just clips in. You wanna hear it snap and then that goes on top of this rubber insert. And that also presses down and clips in. All right, then we've got a nut that goes on that threaded piece we added. And one thing to note here too is it's gonna go this direction not this direction. So there's actually a tool that Thule has included that you use to tighten it down. So that larger end is gonna go facing down and then you use that tool to tighten everything down. And this tool has a built-in click at the right torque. It's basically a little torque wrench um, so you'll hear a loud click when you reach the correct torque. All right, so that's one done. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other three and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so our Rivian specific page is complete. Um, we've got two booklets here with instructions. So this is for the Evo fix point, which is basically just the feet. And the other one which I've been using is for the Caprock platform itself. So. We are on the step where we put the platform on the vehicle and then we're gonna be attaching the platform with the brackets that are already on there that I've installed to the mounting points that we just installed on the Rivian. Okay, the platform is roughly positioned on top of the truck here. Um, definitely want to note again, use something to protect your roof glass. I put a large moving blanket up there just to make sure we didn't scratch or crack the roof glass. And also the platform itself, this upper piece, make sure 
this wind diffuser and your crossbars here are not all the way tightened down before this step. So it says that in the instructions, um, but basically that gives you the ability to slide these fore aft and that'll help you position this rack on the truck um, so it's in the best spot where it's centered. Also of note, you wanna make sure you're clearing the antenna on the back, which I am not right now. So this whole thing's gonna to have to slide forward a little bit, but leaving most of the cross members loose allows you to kind of move this around and position it as needed once you get it on top of the truck and then you tighten everything down. So I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, first step is to get the brackets positioned on the truck. So we're gonna slide that here and it's not gonna just lock into place on its own. So you wanna make sure this bolt is loose all the way. And then this door here is actually gonna move. You have to position it. So you're gonna pull it out and down. It's got little teeth that are gonna bite into this silver bracket. And then when you're ready, you're gonna completely tighten it down by tightening this bolt. That will lock the platform into place and this whole bracket system will be locked as well. So once we get the entire platform in the right spot on the truck, then I'll come back here and tighten all these bolts. All right, I've almost got the platform in position, but you can see right at the back here, there's a little plastic piece with a Thule badge on it and it hangs down from the platform and it's basically about to crash into the antenna. Luckily that I can slide along this whole back piece here. So what I'm gonna do is just move it all the way to the outboard corner. I think it'll still look fine and that'll give me a little bit more clearance to the antenna. All right, I actually pulled the truck outside just to get a better long view of it and make sure everything's centered. Um, still got a few things to shuffle around, but it's getting pretty close. I moved that Thule badge off to the side here. Take that off now. And the rack itself is pretty close to the antenna. It's over it a little bit. Um, we'll take a look at the LTE signal. And if I need to slide the whole rack forward, I have room to do that. So do that in a second. And then we're pretty close to being done with this install. Okay, taking a quick look at the LTE signal. We are still at two bars. Um, so it looks like it's gonna be fine in the position it's in. I will definitely keep an eye on this um, moving forward. And again, there's a little adjustability in the platform itself. So if I notice something wasn't working right, I can always slide it forward a little bit. All right, we're really close to being done here. I just got the rearmost crossbar, this one locked down kind of in position. And then the one all the way at the front is also tightened up. And the reason I did that is so I can then go back and space out the middle three evenly. That way everything's kind of distributed weight wise and spacing wise evenly on the top of the rack. We are on the final step and that is just putting the caps on the brackets. And then if you had a lock, which I might get at some point, that would install here. If you don't have the lock, which is what I've got, you just get this plastic piece that kind of screws in here with a flat head. And that locks everything into place. All right, we're done. Caprock is on the truck. If you're gonna be doing this on your own, I'd set aside probably three to four hours for assembly and installation. Um, it's not super complicated, just takes a little bit of time. You gotta read the instructions thoroughly. Hopefully this video helps out a little bit as well. And putting the platform on the truck is probably the only step I would say you're gonna want a second person for. Um, not worth risking it, trying to do that on your own. Otherwise, you can assemble 95% of it with just one person, which is really nice. For right now, I wanna walk you through kind of my initial impressions of this as it's on the truck, uh, get into some of the details, and then the last thing I'm gonna do is an efficiency test because I wanna know what the range impact of this platform is gonna be. It's a little bit taller and wider than the Rivian crossbars, so I'm expecting it to be a little bit worse um, in terms of efficiency but really interested to get those numbers. So we're gonna do that test in a little bit here. For right now, um, let's just dive into some of the details of this Caprock platform. All right, one of the first things that really caught my attention as I was putting this together, and now that it's on the truck as well, is just how solid it feels. The attachment points to the Rivian seem really robust. The whole platform, if I grab this and try to shake it, um, it's not going anywhere. There's no squeaks, no rattles. Uh, it really feels 
like it's built to last and is a really, really solid platform. All the rails have these slotted channels here with larger openings so you can fit a slotted nut and bolt and basically tie anything down or attach a lot of different gear onto this platform. Um, you've also got those same slotted channels on the back side as well as on the front side of these cross beams. So there's really no limit to how you can attach stuff to this platform and customize it based on what you want to carry. The front and rear cross beams have this rubber stripping on here and this provides a nice softer point of contact if you were attaching something that you didn't want to rest directly on metal. Uh, this would give you a way to do that. And then the rest of these cross beams have this nice little texture that kind of just keeps stuff snug when it is resting there. And speaking of attaching things to the platform, I've already got the max tracks and awning up here. I'm gonna walk over to the other side of the truck and I'll show you how those installed. All right, let's get these max tracks up and out of the way here. So the bracket I'm using to hold the max tracks is the Rivian max tracks mount. You definitely don't have to use this one to mount to this platform. There are a ton of solutions for max tracks out there. This just happens to be the one that I'm using and I was hopeful it would work on this platform. Works just fine. The hardware that came with it from Rivian also works. Um, it slides into this slotted channel really easily. So pretty happy about that. Okay, and then the awning that I've got up here right now just has a pretty simple L bracket. And I had picked up some of these bolts which have a square head um, and those fit also into the slotted channel really nicely. Um, I'll link those in the description. It's a pretty basic part, but it's a really nice way to mount stuff to a lot of different rails and platforms. Um, and it works on this Thule cap rock as well. So this is just the gear that I've had on the crossbars. I've got a lot of space on this platform now. I'll probably add some more stuff to it, but for right now, I wanna get out and test out this platform with nothing on it. I'm gonna take this gear off really quickly here and we're gonna go run our efficiency test and check out those numbers. All right, before we get into those efficiency numbers, let's cover a few of the details and specs of this platform. For this setup, we're using a medium size cap rock platform with the Evo fixed point feet and the Rivian specific brackets. And the entire setup costs $1,349. It weighs in at 53 pounds and the area on top of the platform is 59 by 59 inches. Thule does not list both a dynamic and static load capacity, they just list 330 pounds load capacity, which I'm guessing is their dynamic load capacity number. And finally, this product comes with a limited lifetime warranty. Thule's been building racks and crossbars for decades and I'm pretty confident that this cap rock is built to last. All right, let's get into those efficiency numbers. I started off, as I mentioned, with the crossbars, testing those first. And also, if you haven't seen some of my other videos, I have an efficiency test loop that I use. It's primarily highway driving. I set the speed to 65, my HVAC stays the same, my drive mode stay the same. Basically, I keep all the variables controlled except the thing that I'm testing. And it gives a good rough idea of efficiency numbers. It's not a one size fits all test, and I'll definitely be paying attention to the efficiency as I go out on more trips, but this gave a good baseline. So with the crossbars, I saw an efficiency number for this test of 2.41 miles per kilowatt hour. Once I got the platform installed on the truck, it was time to run that same test over again. I definitely was expecting a bit of an efficiency hit. The platform's taller. It's a little worse for aerodynamics, and I was really interested to see what the results were going to be. I finished up this first test and the results were definitely a little bit worse than I was expecting. The number came in at 2.05 miles per kilowatt hour and being a little disappointed, I reached out to my contact at Thule who had provided me this platform and asked if they had any suggestions for how I might position it better on the truck and they got back to me with some ideas. All right, we're out here about to run a second test. I took the whole platform and moved it forward on the truck the wind deflector here, I actually moved up a little bit, so there's a gap under that. 
and I'm hoping with these little adjustments that maybe we can see some slight improvement to the efficiency. So let's run this test. With these small adjustments, I was unsure of how much different the results would be, but I went ahead, ran the test loop again, and saw a slight improvement up to 2.18 miles per kilowatt hour. It's worth noting, I do have an eye camper on my truck bed that was on there for all the tests that I did, and I have some custom spoiler closeouts as well, so your numbers may vary slightly from what I'm seeing here. Now, if you're setting this up the same way on your R1T, you're gonna wanna have the platform as far forward as possible and the wind deflector up as high as possible. Obviously, I would have loved to see this setup the same as the crossbars in terms of efficiency, but that's just not realistic. It's a roof platform, it's not as aerodynamic, and if you're putting this on your truck, you're going to see some range loss. All right, so some pros and cons to be weighed here. The efficiency hit was kind of to be expected, but if you are trying to maximize your range, I don't necessarily know if this is going to be the best solution for you to put on the roof of your truck. There are other ways to carry gear on the roof that are a little bit more efficient. Um, also, the wind noise is noticeable on the highway. I wouldn't say it's bad by any means. It's a little bit louder than the crossbars, but again, I think that's just because of the footprint of this platform itself. Um, so that's something to consider as well. In terms of the good stuff, I think it's a really good base to add gear to. Um, it's solidly built. It feels like it's gonna last a very long time, which I wouldn't necessarily say about the crossbars. And if you're looking to add accessory lighting and things like that to your truck, I think it's a really good way to get started with that. I do, however, wish the platform was a touch smaller. It sticks out a little bit on both sides of the roof and it doesn't fit on the truck bed. So if you're wondering if you can use this on the truck bed, you would actually have to get the larger platform to make that work. So having it on the roof, but having it still stick out quite a bit, I wish it was a little narrower. The mounting feet are great and they're really solid, but they do stick up a lot. And I've seen some solutions that are a little more low profile. Um, so that's something that I also think could be a little better, kind of scaling the whole platform down a bit and making it closer to the roof, I think would be really nice. So I'm gonna have this on the truck for the next few months, go out on some trips, really use it. As always, I'll share my efficiency numbers from those trips and we'll see how this thing performs over the next few months. I'm hoping it's gonna be a great solution for what I need, um, but I think in terms of the product itself, it really depends on what you're looking for. Again, if you're looking for maximum range and efficiency and just a sleek solution, this probably isn't it for you. But if you're looking for something really robust, you wanna put a lot of gear up there, um, you wanna customize it a little bit, I think it's a pretty cool solution. So I'll check back in with you guys in a few months to let you know how I'm feeling about this. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and I will see you out on the next adventure.